So hello and welcome to Cluster 2 of your qualification in National Certificate Business Administration Services Level 3. The unit standards, as shown, provide the basic foundation for the learning path in this cluster. We explore the strategies when interpreting and writing texts for different communicative contexts. In this topic, we will learn how to use a range of reading and viewing strategies to understand literal meanings of specific texts. For example, if I said the office is painted blue, it is exactly that. If I said the office looks like the blue sky, it is a figurative meaning because I'm comparing it to something else. So what is literal meaning? When we talk about something being literal, it means that it is exact. In other words, in context, it means that you mean exactly what you say. Remember that because there is no body language, tone of voice and or volume when reading, the words become more important to get the message across. Now, we all have vocabulary of words in our brain. You may come across words at some time that you're not aware of. These can easily be interpreted by using the following techniques. Contextual clues, knowledge of syntax, and word attack skills, all equals interpretation. This will mean that when we are reading, it is important to make a differentiation between literal and figurative meanings of words. There is a number of reading and viewing strategies to help us do this. Let's take a look at them. Now, when we read, there's a typical process that is followed. Let's take a look. She is the daughter of the brother who passed away, sadly, last year on her wedding day. Now, when we read, the following happens. The words are decoded. In other words, we analyze the words that we're looking at. We look for an exact meaning. We reorganize the words. Then we infer the meaning by conclusion. We check our own vocabulary and then we react and evaluate the text to conclude or to get an overall meaning of what it actually is saying. Our first technique that we're going to be taking a look at is the knowledge of syntax. Syntax is the set of rules that is needed to form a sentence. Sentences are typically made up of a subject, which is generally a noun, and an object, which is a verb. If we have a look at the example there, the man goes to work. In this case, a noun we know is a thing, place, or person. The verb, what is the man doing? Okay, so it's the doing of whatever the noun is. So the man is going to work. The adverb adds to the verb. So the goes is the verb and to work would be adding to the verb. So it's telling us where and what the man is doing. When we take a look at contextual clues, the parts of the sentence that immediately come before or after a word or passage and clarify its meaning. So the verb goes, in this case, came after the man, which tells us what the man is doing to clarify the meaning of the sentence. If we said goes to work the man, we would need to reorganize the words to make sense. Now, on the other hand, word attack skills are the ability to use a number of strategies in order to recognize unfamiliar words, like the end letters, middle letters, and the use of words around the known words. If we look at the example, we could easily make the assumption that the word G's, geos, is actually goes, just by evaluating and decoding the words before and after the word. Borrowed words are those words borrowed from another language. These words are incorporated into a language from other languages. If we take a look at some examples, court for instance, we know court as the place where judges go to make judgment on criminals or on anybody, any law enforcement um, opportunity or case that may be made, but it actually comes from the French meaning and it means the king's residence. If we take a look at the word zero, it comes from the Arabic language. War, for instance, is Old French for where? Very is Old French for very. And person, which is a word that we're all accustomed to today, comes actually from the Latin word persona. 
Acronyms are words formed from the first letters of other words. If we take a look at a couple of examples, ANC stands for African National Congress, FNB for First National Bank, CETA, Sector for Education and Training Authority, and then we get the BCEA, Basic Conditions of Employment Act. Now, I'm sure there's a whole lot of others that you can actually think about. Remember that it's also important to know what an acronym stands for, that when you're talking to other people, that you actually can explain the acronym if they're not aware or if they don't come from the same language as what you do. Neologisms are new words or expressions formed and or created as a result of growing language and technological advances. Things like surf the web, internet, email, emotional intelligence, learning organizations, binge watching are all new terms and or phrases that have only come into being in the last 20 or 25 years. Colloquialism is an informal word or phrase in any language. It is used in ordinary conversation, informal, and should never be used when writing formal communication. Things like, I wasn't born yesterday, basically telling somebody, I know, okay, you can't fool me, say it ain't so. Further, it generally refers to a figurative meaning rather than a literal one. Slang, on the other hand, are also informal words and phrases that are common in spoken language than in written. Slang is often used by a particular generation and specific groups of people. Who's it? Sharp my bra? Coolio? All mean specific things within a specific group or generation of people. Dialect, again, is a form of language used by a particular social group of people. Now, in our country, in South Africa, the Capetonians are typical for this type of language and a very good example of a dialect um, that's used pretty widely and well known. Um, Capetonians will generally refer to um, or, or pronounce their words in this way. They say, they would speak in that language or use different words, um, other words that are made up for that specific, specific social group. So it's something that's come a long way um, in terms of the language. I'm sure you can think of a dialect of where you come from. Jargon is words and or phrases used by specific industries in business. For instance, stat. The word stat, you've probably heard that before. It's used very often in the medical um, profession to mean immediately, come now or do this now. So I want this stat. All right. And then in the training environment, we can look at words like assessment, which is generally another term for examinations and or tests. And then in purchasing or in a business environment, um, when we're purchasing something, we get the term RFQ, which is also a um, acronym for that matter. And it means a request for quotation, but it's used widely in business in the purchasing and um, buying departments. Ambiguous and or ambiguity means double meaning. These words and or expressions that have more than one meaning. Let's take a look at an example. I rode a black horse in red pajamas. Okay, so did you ride the horse in red, in red pajamas or was the horse in red pajamas? Another example we can take into consideration is, did you see him in the office? The office block is big. It's got 20 or 30 or 40 or 100 different offices. Do we mean the office block? Do we mean in his office? There's a bit of ambiguity there in terms of what we actually want to find out. So make sure that you use your words correctly as not to have a different meaning. In order to interpret and use information from text, it's necessary to have reading strategies. Skimming and scanning are reading strategies to help quickly determine where the text is, what we are looking for, and or whether the content grabs our interest and we want to look further. In skimming, we read the first and last sentence of the paragraph to get the overall meaning. In scanning, we look for specific words, numbers, capital letters, etc. Let's use a combination of scanning and skimming to find information about a summary. So my key word here would be summary. 
If I quickly scan the text at the bottom of the screen, I immediately see the word summary, and this interests me to read further. The first sentence gives me a good idea of what summaries are about. A summary is a brief statement of the main points of something. The purpose of using reading strategies and then rereading a piece of written word is to separate the main ideas from supporting information and also to identify the author's purpose. Let's explore summaries further. Now, we already know that a summary is a brief statement of the main ideas. And generally, when we're looking at text, we'd want to summarize. Now, we'll use that same paragraph for this exercise um, in terms of summarizing. We're going to take that paragraph and we're going to summarize it even further. If we look at one way of summarizing, we can use a common technique known as point form, where we take all the main ideas and we put them into points. Let's take a look. Now I've got my entire paragraph there and I've summed it up in terms of three different points. I have five lines in my paragraph and I have three points which cover the main ideas of that exact paragraph. For instance, summary is a brief statement. The purpose of reading strategies is to separate the main ideas from supporting text and then to identify the author's purpose. So I've taken the core concepts and I've put them into point form. Let's take a look at another way of summarizing. Mind maps are another way of summarizing information and it is generally a graphical representation of the main ideas of the text. Now, if we take a look at the diagram, we can see that I've taken those three points and I've got a central point, which is the summary is, and I've used a globe to represent that for myself. Right, then my first point was, it's a brief statement, so I've branched that out to one section. And then my second point was to separate the main ideas so that I've branched out to another section and made that another color. And then I moved and my last point was to identify the authors. So I've got my three main ideas there and I can now put them together to actually form another paragraph. All right. But that would summarize, if I look at it graphically, it would summarize exactly what a summary is for me. Then we have spider diagrams. Now, spider diagrams are very similar to mind maps, only that it looks like a spider's web, where each connecting point is in a different color. Paraphrasing, on the other hand, is rewriting a piece of text using other words that mean the same. Now we'll use our same um, paragraph for this example. Now we, we know that it says a summary is a brief statement of the main points of something and carried on to the end. Now when I paraphrase that, the new mm -hmm. statement will look like this. The brief statements of main ideas of a piece of text is called a summary. Reading strategies are used to separate the main thoughts from supportive information and then identify the author's reasoning. So I give exactly the same meaning as before. I've just paraphrased it in different words and put together different sentences. And that's a wrap for Cluster 2, Topic 1. Let's take a look at the main ideas. The literal meaning is exactly what is said. A figurative is a comparative relation to something else. To interpret unfamiliar words, use knowledge of syntax, word attacks, and contextual clues, which are useful strategies to use. Sentences have syntax that must be followed when writing. Words should be evaluated in context and in industries, taking colloquialism, jargon, ambiguity, dialect, etc. into consideration. Skimming and scanning are reading strategies that should be applied to evaluate text. Mind maps and spider diagrams are tools to summarize text in graphical format. Summaries and paraphrasing are both techniques to summarize and rewrite pieces of text to gain the overall meaning of the text.